day. Um, my name is Shweta Patnaik and I'm going to speak about digital transformation and internationalization of higher education. So I hail from Cape Peninsula University of Technology in the Faculty of uh, Engineering and Built Environment and I belong to the Clothing and Textile Technology Department. So I'm based in Cape Town in South Africa. So when we speak about digital transformation, we touch base on the term digitalization. And as most of you would be aware, it's basically a concept where we speak about or the concept digitalization promises about enhancing learning on improvising student productivity, at the same time, avoiding issues that come along with uh, budgetary constraints or constraints around con consumerization of technology, because we all are aware um, since last year when we were faced with the pandemic and how access to data or access to connectivity was and still is a major concern globally and the same in South Africa as well. So when we are talking about digitalization, we make sure that digitalization provides ease of information. It provides easy retention of information. It also is about presenting in a much better manner be it on information, be it content, be it assessments, and it's also about sharing of knowledge easily and overall it enhances interest in learning. Then when we speak of internationalization of higher education, now it's basically giving an international dimension. We are sort of introducing and at the same time integrating an internal um, international outlook um, to our stakeholders. So we are preparing stakeholders who are globally ready and not just ready for a particular um, area or country that they belong to. At the same time, it promotes interaction. There is more engagement. There is more um, interaction at a cultural level as well, where the curriculum becomes cross-national and intercultural in nature. Um, there is international scope. It gives a direction of um, how higher education can speak to each other on a global level. It speaks about knowledge economy, how we can enhance our knowledge um, around our area of expertise and knowledge in general as well. It gives a platform for mobility for students, for faculties and programs as well. When we speak about internationalization of higher education, specifically in um, the South African context, we speak about international linkages with um, in between states and between nations and linkages, not just about programs, but linkages involving people, linkages involve, in, um, involving personal. And that would come with bilateral links that happen between the government and between higher education institutions where there is collaboration and integration of knowledge, research and expertise. Um, the Higher Education Act that we have in South Africa, which was framed in 1997, it sort of recognizes the need to address uh, the past discrimination to ensure that there is representativity and um, also providing equal access of higher education. It also gives platform um, to a democratic society based on equality and based on freedom. So the South African education sector has also adopted two different four IR tools, which we term it as digital transformation from primary education to higher and tertiary education. And like I mentioned in the previous slide, it was around the pandemic, um, the novel COVID-19. So this lockdown has motivated um, virtual learning. It has um, enhanced the use of zero rated applications. It has provided many educational websites and also launching of the STEM locked, um, lockdown digital school, which has switch to remote or online learning, as we say. Now, what has this influence or impact of digital transformation been? So digital transformation has added more value to the educational solutions in terms of LMS, which is our learner management system. Uh, well, in our case, it's Blackboard. Then um, it has led to also building collaborative learning and not learning at um, face-to-face -face classroom level, but more about interacting and collaborations. So it has also built up 
to expanding beyond text-based practices of reading and writing. So nowadays we don't uh, expect and the students don't just rely on what a lecturer is presenting in the class, but they rather go and look for it through various digital platforms. And the preference has also increased via these educational platforms. Now, how do we see the future of higher education institutions in terms of digital transformation? Um, I have gathered few uh, messages in the form of voice notes from colleagues in my um, institution. And that is, this is what they had to contribute in a nutshell. This is really a very exciting time that we're living in. In Japan, the Japanese who are regarded to be leaders in quality management, they use a term known as Kaizen. So in a culture of continuous improvement, Kaizen refers to when there's a breakthrough improvement. And when it comes to digital transformation, there really never was a question in my mind, there really never was a question about if digital transformation was ever going to take place. It was a more question of when it was going to take place. And I see this era that we stand in, this age, 2020, COVID-19 um, and the pandemic, as our breakthrough, our Kaizen that has happened. And so now is when things are happening. And the only question that is left now is how it will look. So we know that things have, there's no turning back. There never was any turning back. But for anyone who was a naysayer and uncertain before, it's now more clear to them than ever that we need to change. And the only question is how we're going to change. And I think now is also a time that we have to be careful about how we change because what looks as if it might be good isn't necessarily the best in it doesn't necessarily serve the best interests of all so I think although it's an exciting time it's also a time that we should be mindful of things such as ethics and privacy and um, uh, integrity of what it is that we are doing um, because as much as technology has the potential to make things better, um, w we should tread with a bit of caution, even though it's very exciting and tempting to go ahead and try new things and to embrace technology and all the benefits and rewards that it has to offer us. I think there's also something to be said about just being cautious and careful that we don't do more harm than good at the end of the day. So they said in overall that we have to keep looking up for change because that is where the world is and there is no turning back. It has to happen. Change is the only constant like we are well aware of. Um, at the same time, we have to make sure that when we are making this online platform exciting and mindful, we also have to keep in mind of aspects around privacy, around integrity and ethics. We cannot um, negate these factors. Um, and also this push to the digital world, many a times it can be out of force. It might not be something that um, all of us are doing willingly. Um, then the access and equity, which um, needs to be addressed, it also can arise some sort of socioeconomic issues. Um, at the same time, when we are used to or as um, stakeholders or as educators, we are used to the face-to-face -face interaction. So that lacking is not just bringing up what is expected of students, but also it is leading to deregistration of students as well. Um, the instructor ability, which is um, the kind of content, the quality or the access to these data, which is so important because without it, a digital transformation is not possible in a real world. When we speak about digital transformation, we also know that a pandemic has highlighted the knowledge that is important and how important knowledge is and how can knowledge be accessed outside the classroom. There is always a room for change. Well, yes, the learner management systems have given an amazing platform to interact and to put the content together, to formulate assessments together. But at the same time, there is always room for change and that there can be more opportunities in terms of um, collaborative platforms or in terms of um, engagement and in which there needs to be more surveys done. Now, one of the challenges that we face when we speak about um, digital transformation or what are the hindrances that comes in front of us? 
first of all, digital transformation is all about innovation. It is about creativity. It is about bringing about a significant change. But at the same time, there is also evidence of infallibility and the importance of digital literacies in higher education con in the higher education context. It is also about integration into a formal context, which is still very um, much at a poor level. And that is what a student perspective is. In terms of an academic perspective, there is lack of time. There is at times lack of knowledge and experience in terms of digital technologies and how do we address to these digital technologies. There is lack of accessible training. There is um, lack of face-to-face -face sessions and all of these give rise to what we commonly face are our technical problems. There can be financial issues where there is um, lack of resources. There can be also lack of personal interest due to um, educators accessing the face-to-face -face interaction mode for decades or more than that. And the use of digital technologies in higher education, when it comes to transformation of information, it shouldn't be unidirectional and it should be more bidirectional. So in suggestion, what do we think can work or what would possibly be sort of a solution to our challenges around digital transformation? There needs to be a lot of professional engagement and professional engagement comes with proper communication, with a proper medium of communication channels. There needs to be collaboration and not just collaboration at the institutional or national level, but collaboration on an international level. Um, sourcing of digital resources where we make sure that we not just create, but we share digital resources as well, because what might be knowledgeable or experience for us, it might be um, an amateur level for somebody else. So sharing of digital resources and in terms of digital, um, in terms of teaching and learning, making sure that we use and at the same time manage digital technologies. We don't just bring in new and new technologies, but still carry out with the existing technologies and try managing them in an orderly fashion. Um, assessments, using the digital technologies and strategies to strengthen assessment and to make sure that the assessment is at the same time ethically being carried out. And there are many platforms or there are many ways that one can assess, making sure that it is um, dignified and at the same time it is in the integrity is maintained empowering learners because all that we're doing here is only to make sure that we reach out to our stakeholders so we not just use digital technologies but also make sure that we are magnifying the aspect of inclusion to make them feel that they are listened they are heard and that the platform created is for their own benefit and then lastly, facilitating learners' digital competence, which is making sure that we prepare our learners to be responsible when it comes to using digital technologies, be it for information, be it for communication, be it for well-being and problem solving, because digital technologies have a major flip side of it where it can be misused to a major extent. So this is what are some of my suggestions that I feel might work when we speak about digital transformation. And yeah, I hope you all find it uh, effective and fruitful and helpful in some manner. Thank you so very much for listening to the presentation. And I wish you all the best in your endeavors and I wish you good luck in whichever part of the world you are. And yeah, catch you sometime soon.